The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 11th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope open out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a slightly mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the Russell, which is off one point, so it's basically flat. The other indices trading to the upside. Dow is up 72, two tenths of a percent, a quarter percent for the S&P, or 11.6 tenths for the NASDAQ 100. 96 96 point move there. 22 for the semis are up six cents per cent. Trend is up about two tenths or 26 bucks there. Uh, you've got gold up eight dollars. Silver's up 21 cents. Lights recruit is off 250. Natural gas back 12 cents. 30 year treasuries up one point and one tick at 113.03. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got uh, Eli Lilly up 21 bucks, three and a half percent. Adobe's up three percent or 16 bucks. Equinix 11 bucks, one and a half percent. Amgen up eight dollars and change. That's a three percent move, and Nvidia is up two percent. That's an eight dollar move there. To the downside, it's Inspire Medical Systems, twelve percent move, twenty two bucks. Davida Inc off seventeen bucks or twenty percent. Penumbra Inc sixteen dollars seven percent. Stryker Corp sixteen bucks six percent. Intuitive Surgical fifteen bucks five percent move. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's begin the day by looking at what? Let's begin the day by. Well, let's go take a look at market breadth out here. Let's see where we're at short-term-wise. This will be the 30-minute time frame. This happens to be the S&P 500, bullish. 213 has been trading above resistance, 149 trading below support. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100, 30-minute time frame, bullish. 54 above, 17 below. Let's go take a look at those other four time frames, 60, 240, daily and weekly. Let's first begin by taking a look at what? Let's take a look at the S&P 500, bullish for the 60, 240 and daily, and on the week weekly basis, you still have a negative crossover, means 62 trading above, 213 below there. When we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, we're going to see it's green across the board, daily, weekly, 240 and 60. So that tells us you've got strong market breadth across the board for the NASDAQ. You're in pretty good shape inside the S&P 500, with the exception being the longer term time frame, it's weekly out there. So that's a good start. A good enough start for us to go ahead and switch. Well, the other thing that we want to take a look at out here is a spot volatility index. As we take a look at it, what it is likely to do today as the market continues its equity rally is to get down and test or bust through the 50-day exponential moving average. That 50-day is currently printed at 1610. Spot volatility index uh, the, is the spot volatility index price is currently printed at 1633. Watch that 1610 level. If price closes below it, not necessarily just for day one, but it, look if it closes below it. Key level of support will have failed. It'll be signaling a further rally is likely. If price tests and rejects that, while the ES Mini is also testing and rejecting its 44 
a 16 level or what is it? we have 44 16 50 level out there boy we really would need to take a look at those intraday charts to see what kind of trading signals we have out there so that's what i'd be watching during the day today the spot volatilics and the es mini as it approaches both one approaches support and the other approaches resistance let's switch over and take a look at those white background charts out here and we'll begin with the daily equity future contract. They're going to be the ES Mini in your upper left-hand corner. So we can see that 44.16, as we were on the air yesterday, as we were going off the air yesterday, what we weren't sure of, well, what we knew was we knew where the sellers resided, 44.16.50. We didn't know how strong they would be, but we certainly learned, didn't we? And they were strong enough to back price down. The question is, will they be strong enough today? And it's that spot volatilics that's really going to be the answer to that question. The U.S. dollar index trading slightly lower, but nothing big out there to really impact um, the uh, market so we got to watch that support and resistance levels out here in the case of the NQ we know that it's market breadth positive we are trading uh, almost trading above yesterday's high really close to it watch that level that level by the way yesterday's high in the NQ was at 15383.50 we're getting really close to that we start trading above that odds favor and move up to 15509 you could even see a price move up to the 15719 level the 15719 level is a TD9 count breakdown area in the case of the Dow equity future contract not as strong as the NQ. Um, I guess kind of to be expected. The NQ, we know we've got positive market breadth for 30, 60, 240 daily and weekly. The Dow equity future contract wants to go target that 34, 167 area. That's the top of its daily profile. And the Russell 2000, as we said, is struggling a bit. That struggle doesn't mean a whole lot this morning. It's trading above its bullish structured profile. It's trading above its oscillator and change line. Its target is 1824.80 to the upside. Now, let's go from here and let's dive down into the intraday charts out here just to try to get a feel. Let's begin with the NQ. Since that's the strong dog out here, what is the NQ communicating to us? Well, if we look at a five hour time frame chart out here, the five hour time frame chart, the current bar that we are in, it's not going to matter. There's no topping pad that we have out here on a five-hour time frame chart. And you're above resistance, which is both uh, the top of its profile, the five-hour profile, as well as the oscillator and change line. This suggests that further move higher, 15.509. If we look at the 240-minute chart, you've got a wave number seven top that could be in place. The only way that that gets in place, that wave seven gets confirmed, is a lower high. And I don't know, this current bar uh, is going to complete at 2, uh, 2 p.m. If there's any kind of spike above 15, 387.25, then that just simply extends itself. On the two hour time frame chart, we've got uh, no. I take that back. You actually have a Rosemont indicator top because that is a key reversal bar. That key reversal bar, you have to have three things. You have to be in extended condition. Trust me, when a Rosemont indicator signal gets uh, triggered, you're in an extended condition. You've got to exceed the high and low of the prior bar. Well, that's happened on the two-hour time frame chart. You need to close one tick in the opposite direction. That took place. So the resistance level set up by the two-hour time frame chart is at 15, 387.25 level which we already established, your price closes above that. It extends at 240-minute uh, wave number seven. But you do have a short-term top in place uh, for the two-hour time frame chart. I don't see anything on the 60-minute. The 30-minute has a wave number seven top. The price found support at 15,297. 15,297 is going to be your key level to watch to the downside. That's regarding the NQ. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Uh, so what I've got up on my screen right now is the uh, seasonal charts uh, that are provided by the folks over at Seasonix, and it allows us a lot of flexibility here uh, with regard to how we want to take a look at this. So the chart that I have up on my screen right now is take a look at the last quarter century, and it's looking – it's looking at the pre-election years out there. Now, uh, in my ear, one of my systems – back up okay so I uh, may have some internet issues uh, going on here if I do my apology for that but again we're looking at the uh, S&P 500 we're looking at the last 25 years but what I've got this set to is the uh, is the pre-election cycle out here and so we really only have six data points but at the same point in time that we have uh, the S&P 500, the ES Mini, testing resistance, the top of its daily profile. And we have the spot volatilix pulling back towards its 50-day exponential moving average out here. If, in fact, the 50-day holds and resistance on the ES Mini holds, this suggests, if pattern follows this analog, that we should see a short-term top form right around right now, today, yesterday, tomorrow, but right around right now with a pullback for about a week. And then, as you can see here, over that 25-year period of time, or really for these six data points, October moves higher, moves higher into the end of the month. And then what we have out there, or what it has during this time period, has basically been a consolidating pattern out there. So that's a 25-year chart. We can go beyond the 25 as an example. We can go to 95 years up here. We can, again, select each of the uh, pre-election years, so it does that for us automatically. And here, you can see if this is the cycle that we're in, this takes us back 90 five years quite a few touch points out there and here what we can see is we're supposed to be topping right about now as well with the market moving lower into the end of the year when i say into the end of year i'm referring to about the week before christmas out here so it's very possible that this is the pattern versus the pattern being let's do this here let's come back here let's take a look at 95 years let's not do more i didn't mean to do that that's weird um Okay, Stevie has a different way to do this. Now, that was a DAX. Let's try to come back here for the S&P 500. Why is it still doing that? Oh, it's done 44 years. That's why, probably. Let me try this here. Huh. Okay. 
Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we've got it. Now, this would be the normal seasonal cycle. And let me just do it like this. So the normal seasonal cycle, those of you that have been uh, listening to my show for a number of years, you know, I used to do this chart by hand out here. Normal seasonal cycle is right around mid-October. This is for the S&P 500. The exact date out here is October the uh, 13th. But we already have a bottom pattern that is in place out here for all four of the equity future contract and certainly for the ES Mini out there. And this would suggest that the Santa Claus rally, basically, I consider the Santa Claus rally to begin with the fall bottom that typically gets put in. So the question becomes, which seasonal cycle are the markets uh, following? Is it going to be the election cycle? Or is it just simply going to be, it's going to ignore the election cycle? I don't know the answer to that, but we're going to have a pretty decent idea here pretty soon, I would say within the next couple of days out there. So that's the importance of the relevance of the top of that daily profile that was tested and rejected yesterday in the ES and, and, and price still trading above its 50-day exponential moving average for the spot volatile index. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Let's go uh, take a, a look at some of the requests that we've got coming in. And thank you to each of you who have provided me with these requests. Much appreciated. Let's get over to those white background charts. We're going to start off, take a look at FSM. And this is for not a trader inside the Tiger's Den. So if he's not a trader or she's not a trader, must be an investor out there. So we take a look at FSM. Let's take a look at it, though, from the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. This happens to be one of the uh, uh, Fortuna silver mines out here. And just like uh, silver is dealing with resistance, it was trained above resistance out there. That was the top of its daily profile. It rejected that yesterday and the day before. May reject that day's end, it being 2203. Well, you can see that uh, Fortuna silver also basically doing the same thing. It's trading into its bearish structured sell zone area. That's caused by that TAS market profile. So the sellers inside of SF, FSM, not a trader, are between 282 and 290. And so far, they have uh, held up their end of the bargain. Now, if buyers can close above 290, do that for two consecutive sessions, that suggests a further move higher. But further move higher to well, where? The next resistance level. Right now, I've got the next resistance level at 292. So that would be another area that you're watching. That happens to be the bottom of the daily profile. Now, if Fortuna Silver can overtake the daily bear structured profile out there where a counter trend rally if this is all this is i'm not saying that it is but i can share with you if this is just a counter trend rally where price would find resistance would be the center of that bullish structured weekly profile that price has been below for more than two consecutive weeks so if you can get above 290 look for a move up to 303 that could be where the rally stalled if in fact for tuna silver and this is for not a trader because he uh, must be an investor out there you're looking for a close above 303 if you get a weekly close above 303, then you're off to the races. And those races should take price up to the 368 level. So right now, you're trading the resistance on the daily time frame. The uh, monthly time frame just simply shows a consolidation with inside its profile, although it has lost its momentum as price trades below red oscillator and change line that says that price could always get back to that 231 level so that's what i see when i take a look at fsm hope that that helps you out if not please write back let me know what specific information you're looking for that i was unable to cover dan inside the tiger's den would like to take a look at ticker symbol amtx and amtx right now is trading out at about four dollars and 56 cents it is trading below the center of its uh, daily profile out there. Now, it's a slightly bearish structured profile that the center is slightly closer to the top than the bottom, but it's somewhat equally distributed. Here's what we know about AMTX, that is a Metis, and that is on the daily time frame it formed one of Stevie's favorite bottoms, and that's at Rhodes Mentum Indicator. And the reason is because that can oftentimes set up a slingshot to the upside. The slingshot to the upside, though, you still have to deal with resistance zones. And that's what helps us with those TAS market profiles. So you've got a bullish uh, pattern out here on a daily basis. Price consolidating with inside its daily profile. Price should go target that 510 to 522 level. However, we have a TD9 count bottom on the weekly. And what we don't like so far is this week's action or basically yesterday's action. What Dan and I wouldn't know is why did price stop where it did if we only looked at the daily time frame chart? Now that we have the weekly time frame chart out as well, both Dan and I know exactly why price stopped where it did. Why? 
because on a weekly basis, that's that red oscillator and change line. That is the resistance point. So yes, we've got a TD9 count bottom, but we also have a test rejection of a very key resistance level. So we're gonna go on a weekly chart that this is a neutral type signal out there. Dan, what you need to see here is really a close above that 522 in order to be free to move higher. And that free to move higher could take you all the way up to 659, even 782. On a monthly time frame chart, you just have a good old fashioned consolidation with inside profile support at 183 and profile resistance at 584. So watch that 491 level. Um, out here on a shorter term basis, let's call it a 30 minute, see if there's any kind of signal out here to give you a feel for what's going on an intraday, on an intraday basis out here, what do we have? Not much. Yeah, I don't have anything that's gonna help us out there, Dan. So AMTX looks good on the daily, doesn't look so good on the weekly, although it does have that TD9 count bottom. But boy, you close below that low, and that would be at $3.97 that would not be looking good at all. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So the next is ticker symbol we're going to take a look at. Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. I am, which is uh, Lithium Americas Corp out here. And uh, we're looking for a bottom. 
So if we look for a bottom pattern, now, first, if you take a look at the very right-hand side chart, what you're going to see is you're going to see an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, there's several A to B equals CD patterns out here. This would be, let's call it the most conservative one. So we know that we're at an A to B equals CD. That says if we were to see a bullish reversal candle on the daily, on the weekly, that would confirm a buy the D point pattern. Turns out that last week, in fact, did that on the weekly basis, Dan. You got a nice big old bullish engulfing candle. Now, that low is being tested as we speak this week. And that low was 969. The price closed below 969. That pattern goes away. We also have a wave seven pattern on the weekly chart that, of course, needs a higher low to confirm. So that could, could extend itself, you know, for quite a while out there. We won't know until we see next week's trading. On the monthly time frame chart, if it were to generate a bullish reversal candle, then you'd have a big old monthly Gartley buy pattern or buy the D point. Short of that, on a monthly basis, this tells us price wants to maybe get all the way back to $2.39 out there. So again, watch last week's low as we speak right now. Now, last week's low also generated a TD9 count bottom. I don't know if it was last week, was October the 2nd. Was that last week or was that the week before that? That was the... Uh, that was a week before that. So you have a daily TD9 count bottom pattern. That low formed on the bar following bar number nine. Now that created a swing point on October 2nd. That swing point did, did volume of 4.1 million shares. Geez, Dan, you're coming down today in less than two hours of trading, or about two hours of trading exactly, 2.7 million shares. That's not how you like to see a test of a key swing point out there. So that makes that low, that 969 low, really important. Now odds favor because you've tested that with greater volume, that that low will get tested again. Now, if it gets taken out, that TD9 count bottom is gone. Um, you still have to wait to the end of the week to see if the buy the D point pattern on the weekly chart holds up or not. But that, that, would be, uh, that would be a chink in the armor, and that would say you're looking at lower price as far as when to get in on this. So you've got to watch, I'd say, not just today's activity, but perhaps today's activity where it closes. And then tomorrow, uh, if we get a test and rejection of that swing point on lighter volume, assuming it doesn't get taken out, and I don't know why we're assuming that. I'm just saying if that's the case that happens and uh, we see it close back above 969 today, watch for that test tomorrow. It's on lighter volume because you've got the daily bottom. You have the weekly bottom out there. You don't have anything on the monthly chart. On a 30-minute time frame, we take a look at Lithium America. Corp. What we're going to see out here is a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. And that took place right now. At that took place at 1030. So an hour ago, Dan, we haven't seen a lot of price moving out here. And you've got resistance up above first resistance level 1011 above that 1114, 1143, 1158 and 1167 out there. So there's potential. But if you take out the, on a 30 minute basis, the low of the day out here, that would not be a good scene. And that would suggest Lithium American Corp is going to give you a better entry point out there. But we'll have or you'll have a better idea, a better idea over the course of the next couple of days, certainly I would say by Friday. So, Dan, I hope that helped you out with regard to that ticker symbol, and thank you so much for your requests. Much appreciated. The next one coming in from John C. in the Tigers. Dan, let's take a look at the XLF. The XLF formed a beautiful TD9 count bottom. We've had a nice rally. Price is back inside its profile. It's bullish in structure. If price can close above 33.24 again today, it did that yesterday. It offers us the hope that price will make its way up to the top of that profile, John, and that's at 33.69. If it doesn't close above uh, the 33.25 level, then what's it telling us? Well, likely that price would pull back and test that oscillator and change on to 3306. Do you have a bottom? If, if that was the question, the answer is yes, you do on the daily time frame. Do we on the weekly? We'll know on Friday. Why will we know on Friday? We've got a nice TD9 count top that formed out here. So that identified the top for you. That turned into an A to B equals CD to the downside. I'm just simply going to move that uh, A to B level down. You can see we're more than a one to one. Right now, you've got a bullish engulfing candle. If you get a bullish reversal, Universal candle at week's end, you will have a confirmed Gartley buy pattern to go along with the confirmed daily TD9 count bottom. So if the question was, has the XLF made a bottom? It did so. It confirmed that bottom on October the 4th out there. At the end of the week, we'll know if the weekly chart is going to confirm a bottom as well. On the monthly time frame, what we have is a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside the monthly profile. What we also know about the monthly chart here for the XLF is that the 
Oscillator and change line has acted as key resistance. And so on any rallies out there, 3490 at this moment in time is that key resistance level. As price changes, that is going to change as well. But that's the area where the XLF really would need to close above to say that, hey, this thing might have some real legs to it. Right now, it's got some tradable legs. Uh, so that's what I've got when I take a look at the daily time frame. Now, from a 30-minute basis, the XLF has confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. As we take a look at this, we go by the play by play out here you can see that right now right now price is testing a key level of support john and that level is the bottom of that profile at 3326 we get a 30 minute close below 3326 this tells us we're headed lower now headed lower to where i don't have any breakout areas out here that i can go back to so i just have to look back and revert back to prior swing points that's back at about 11 o'clock in the morning on october 9th and that's anywhere between 3271 to 3284 out there so watch the bottom of that profile on a 30 minute basis 3326. If the XLF closes below that, we're likely headed lower. And again, 3306 would be a good target as well. That is that daily oscillator and change sign. So, John C., now, it's not unusual to see a pullback today. What do you mean, Steve O? Well, if we just take a look at its dance movements out here, it had a five step or a five consecutive month, uh, daily closes out there. Last time we saw five daily consecutive closes, the upside was on April 19th. And what did that set up? That set up an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. So not unusual for it to trade lower today. What you want to watch, though, is that daily oscillator and change line, because if price closes below that, that's a real good signal the XLF would be headed lower out there. So I hope that that helps you out, John, with regard to the XLF. Thank you again for taking the time to write in. The next request coming in from S&P, and S&P wants to take a look at Palantir. PLTR is the ticker symbol out here. Palantir has got an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern. Let's take a look at it. We'll simply draw the A to B line out here. And then we'll just simply move that over to the C point. That was that retracement that occurred after that B point. And you can see we're at a one-to-one. -one. We're above the one-to-one -one area. All this tells us right now, S&P, is just be careful. Um, you know, things are bullish. You're above a green oscillator and change line, above the top of its profile. But if we does generate a bearish reversal candle, you're going to get a sell signal. The weekly chart says, yeah, but I don't see that happening just yet. Why? Because I'm trading above the top of my profile. That's at 1757. May not close above it on Friday, but that's the key level that you would be watching. If it does close above that, then it could run back to its recent highs in the $20 area out there. On the weekly, a monthly time frame, um, we have price trade above the top of its profile which is up at 1763. So looks good on the monthly. It's looking good right now on the weekly. It's looking good on the daily. The daily says just be cautious out there because if you get a topping pattern, a topping candle out there, not a topping pattern, you already got the pattern, CA to B equals CD pattern. But if you get that bearish reversal candle, then this should pull back. And the pullback level that we'd be looking at S&P would be about $16.38. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back, we're going to take a look at Apple for Dennis, the XLE, and the T. LT. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Folks, so we're going to take a look at Apple. This is for Dennis in West Palm Beach out here. Apple's in an A to B equals C D to the upside. That says if there were a bearish reversal candle that formed, we would see a Gartley sell pattern. Now, Apple has been struggling in the uh, gap down area. There was a gap down on September 7th. So between the September 6th and September 7th time period, there was big volume there. 112 million shares as an example yesterday, moving higher with a total of 43 million shares. So, you know, you've got that big gap area that you're dealing with. If price is able to spike above yesterday's high, and it can do that either today, tomorrow, or on Friday, then you're likely to get a TD9 count top. Now, we'll have to come back to that tomorrow and Friday to make sure of that, but that's something else to be looking for. So if you're looking for a price to move higher out here, if that spikes above 179.72, that says you've also got to be careful for the daily time frame. And we can see that a TD9 count top is what identified the most recent top, the one from September 1st out here. So right now, things on the daily look good, but you have to be on the lookout for either a spike above yesterday's high or a bearish reversal reversal candle that could confirm a Gartley sell pattern. The weekly chart, Rhodes Mentum Indicator Top, price found support where it should have, 170.42. You're trading with inside this bullish structured profile. This says price should be able to run up to 183.27. The monthly chart out here, um, I don't have much, but what I do have is a pretty big bearish structured monthly profile. And typically when you close below the center, which it did last month, price will make its way down to 147.01. So maybe what the charts are telling us here is that, at least Apple, is that uh, that the um, markets are going to follow along the uh, election cycle out here. We should be looking for some type of top to form, and this could be the high for the rest of the year out there. Yeah, that's what it could be. But we'll see. We can take this stuff one day at a time out here. And right now, with regard to Apple, everything looks good. Just be on the lookout for some um, for a bearish reversal candle. That that would then uh, provide us with the information we're looking for, which would be that okay, Apple's at least topped out. So thanks for that request out there. Let's go to our next request. This one's coming in from Flip. Flip wants to take a look at the XLE. Wow, Stevie, I thought you had the XLE up there. Let me try this here. Don't have it there. Apparently, Stevie is sleeping at the switch. He most certainly is. So let's get back here. Let me just kind of try to stay in order. Let's go take a look at XLE. And this is for Flip out here. We'll just, uh, this will take just a moment here to populate. 
Uh, but once it does, once it does, we're all set. Now, in the case of the XLE, uh, you had a gap up a couple of days ago. That confirmed they uh, buy the D point pattern out here. Price is pulling back and is testing that gap to the upside. Now, the volume on that gap to the upside was 30 million shares. So far today, in a couple hours plus of trading, you're back with 10 million shares. So it's pulling back with pretty decent volume. Is it just going to test that gap? In order to test that gap, you need to get down to 86.50. 86.50 would be good. You got down to 86.55. So that gap still remains open up here. Well, we also know about about uh, uh, the uh, activity from yesterday is price ran right into resistance, really where it should have. That was at its green oscillator and change line, very close to the top of its daily profile. The top of that profile, 89.38. So what do we have out here? You've got a bottom with price finding resistance and a consolidation with inside its profile. And that range is 85.11. Both the center and bottom are down there, and the top is at 89.39. On a weekly time frame chart, you've got a, a TD9 count top with price consolidating with inside its profile, being below that green Green oscillator and change line does open the door for a further retracement. A further retracement could take you back to 8309 or 8052 out there. We're not making that call just yet because we've got that daily bottom that is in place out here. But if you trade below the low, the low, close below the low, that low, what we're talking about is 84.26. That's then going to say 83.09 or 80.52 is on deck. With regard to the energy sector and its monthly time frame, TD9 count top, just a sideways consolidation between 94.71 and about the $75 area out here. So we know that uh, the XLE has a sympathy for the direction of Lightspeed Crude. And as we mentioned earlier, maybe at the top of the hour, you do have Lightspeed Crude is pulling back. You want to watch the area of 82.85. Flip. If price closed below 82.85, that is the November contract for Lightspeed Crude. Price is likely headed back. In the case of a Lightspeed Crude, 78.94 would be the next target. And if that happens, then you're likely to see the XLE pull back as well. So right now you've got the daily bottom, the weekly is uh, suspect, the consolidating. We'll just say at this stage the same thing with regard to the monthly chart out here. So I'd say watch Lights Recruit as well to help Flip with his next move in interpreting the energy sector, the XLE. We had Flip and we've got Zip. And Zip wants to take a look at the TLT. So if we take a look at the TLT, what we can see here is price right now is regaining the set, the bottom of its daily profile at 87.75 out there. We're going to, of course, take a look at the 30-year Treasury. Now, if this is only a counter trend move and we don't have a bottom pattern, well, today would generate the buy the D point pattern because it has a gap to the upside. And that would say if this is just a counter trend move where price would stall, where price would run out of steam, where it turned back down, it would be at 89.05. On a weekly basis, you have a bull sash candle as we speak right now. That would be confirming a roads meant to indicator bottom. But we won't know that till Friday. If we do get a bottom, that suggests move up to 90.43. So you got 89.05 and 90.43. The monthly chart could form a rose momentum indicator bottom but it's too soon to make that call it just needs a bullish reversal candle even though right now it shows up as a hammer it's not a hammer it's a hammer right now but it's not a hammer until the end of the month let's take a look at 30-year treasury which is basically doing the same thing which is trying to get back inside its profile the bottom of that profile is at 112.31 that's what you want to watch out there if price today can close above it odds favor move up to the next resistance level and that's the center and that center is going to come in at 115.19 so that's what you want to be watching for the 30-year treasury if you happen to be long TLT or if you're short or if you're on a long TBT, which would be the short position out there. So right now, what do we see? We don't see any kind of a topping signal on an intraday chart other than the four-hour and five-hour chart. And those show that the 112.24 area, the TD9 count breakdown area, is a level that you really want to see price close above. Uh, I said 113.24. I'm going to say 112. 113.24. That's the next real key area out there, uh, Zip, that you're looking for price to close above to suggest that the TLT really wants to run higher. So thank you so much for that request. Let's go to the next one. Let me close these charts out, though, and free up some resources. The next one coming in from Nicholas. And Nicholas is returning from a beautiful trip to Spain. He was in Portugal. He was in Italy. He was all over the place. He was drinking great food, is what he said. He was drinking, a, he had great weather, great food, and great wine. Now, that's the lifestyle out there. That's the lifestyle that we like. That's for sure out there. So glad that you made it back uh, safe out there. I think traveling overseas is not going to be easy for many years to come. If you were wondering, why did Stevie and Janice take all those trips this year? 
It was because we were anticipating that World War III was likely going to begin, and we ain't going to be doing a whole lot of travel over to Europe or anyplace else anytime soon. But let's go take a look at the Bank of America. BA is a ticker symbol that Nicholas wanted to take a look at. It's got that beautiful Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom with price now trading above the top of its daily profile here, where Boeing should head to. I said Bank of America, didn't I? Did I say Boeing or Bank of America? I don't remember which one I said out here, but we're taking a look at the start stock, stock charts for Boeing, B-A. So if I did say Bank of America, my apology. Now, where Boeing should head to, it should be targeting 209.83. And 209.83 is the top of its, uh, it's not the top, it is its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Now, you can get a buy the D point pattern this week inside of Boeing on the weekly basis. Just needs a bullish reversal candle. And at the present time, that is a bull sash. And the monthly chart point right back to profile support between 181.21 and 191.24. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Halliburton. This is also for Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas, uh, we take a look at Halliburton. 
A couple of days ago, formed a uh, by the D point pattern. Price is trading above the top of its daily profile, above its green oscillator and change line. That's at 40, 60, and 40, 77, respectively. Price should continue to move higher out there and probably wants to go target uh, its recent high. That's the high from back in September 19th. And that's in the uh, range of um, well, anywhere from a low of uh, 4107 up to the 4315 level. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, you've got just a consolidation with inside its weekly profile. Profile. Price found support at the bottom of that last week at 38.24. So just a consolidation between that and 42.60. On a monthly time frame, price is trading with inside its profile. Resistance is at 41.41. That is the top of its bearish structured profile. A monthly close above that would be a bullish outcome. But to really what you want to see here is, uh, well, really just close above that would be off to a good start. Next request coming in from uh, S&P wants to take a look at the GDX. Now, the GDX out here, what do we have? I don't have any reason to suggest that this is not going to head higher out there. You're above, you've got a TD9 count bottom. Uh, looks like it wants to make a move to 28.64, maybe 28.97 out there. Uh, we've got a request to take a look at UNG, and they're looking for an entry into UNG. We won't look at UNG. We'll take a look at the natural gas contract we know that price found resistance on a daily basis at that td9 count breakdown level and that's up at three dollars and 43 cents out here if you're looking for an entry into the ung i'd wait for natural gas to pull back and test support and that would be down at about three dollars and 12 cents to 308 so that's what i'd be waiting for there joe folks thanks so much for all the requests out there it really makes the show go smoother at least it does for stevie thanks for joining me have a wonderful wednesday and i'll see you tomorrow on terrific Thursday. Be safe out there. Take care.